Hey y'all, it's Victoria. It is your friendly neighborhood trans girl. So I just wanted to shoot a video today and I wanted to talk a little bit about what it was like growing up being trans but not knowing I was trans and also having to hide it. Um, I guess I first realized I was different when I was around eight years old and um, there was this green dress in my mom's closet and uh, it was made out of wool and it was like knee length and I was drawn to it and I didn't know why I was drawn to it but I was and um, then I noticed the shoes <laughs> and they were underneath the green dress and my mom had all these like designer shoes like Chanel and Ferragamo and all these other ones and um, I was totally drawn to them I put them on, they didn't fit, but I tried them on anyways. And uh, eventually I tried on the other dress and uh, it was something about it. And, uh, but at the same time, I knew it was something that I needed to not share. So um, when I was going 10 or 11 years old, I convinced my sister to dress me up as a girl. And um, I went downstairs and I showed my dad and I was so excited, I remember being, oh, look at this, I did such a good job. And uh, of course, I got down there and my dad's face changed. You know, went from being like this happy, shiny, happy face to like just full out anger. And um, he just said, go upstairs and change. And, you know, with this very very strict look on his face and his hand pointing to the stairs and uh, that was the last time I ever even tried um, I knew at that point it was something to be ashamed of and to hide it very very well um, so that was kind of my foray into the first foray into it and uh, of course I um, still did it. I was drawn to it. I couldn't help myself, but I also learned how to hide it. So when I was home alone, I would go up there and do it. And then one day I was like 14 and um, my sister was a little bit older than me. She was like four and a half years older than me. And she was going to like a prom or something. And I didn't know that I was just a little dumb kid. And uh, I guess my mom had bought her like a new dress and new pantyhose and all this stuff and um, I was going in there and raiding her stuff <laughs> and um, I saw these pantyhose and I was like oh my god what is this and so I tried it on and I was like mesmerized by it I knew it was something that I just felt so right and um, I put them on and I put my pants on on top and I walked around the house and it was just amazing. It was a trap though. I had really sprung on myself because um, that night um, my mom got home and she's like, where are those tights? And uh, <laughs> my sister's like, I don't know. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and my cousin, uh, Emina, she was living with us and she was living in the basement. She's my dad's sister's, um, my dad only has one sister and my mom's an only child. And uh, my dad's sister's child, and she was like uh, about the same age as me. And um, she was kind of a misfit and everything else. And uh, so my mom just blamed her. <laughs> I was like, thank God Amina was there. So. Um, she got blamed for it. She was like, what the hell? <laughs> and I was definitely not going to say anything. So I feel like I kind of got off the hook because of that. But um, that definitely made me a lot more careful. And, you know, there was a few more kind of situations like that where there was really close calls. I remember once I was like uh, around 19 or 20 years old and I was I went out with my friends. We were going to a bar. And I decided I was going to wear um, women's knee-high socks underneath my black pants and my black shoes and I figured no one was going to see it. Of course that night I got super drunk and um, I'm sitting on 
a curb <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning at a, like just outside the bar trying to catch myself and uh my obviously when you sit down really low on the ground your pants kind of slide up right so um i was so drunk i didn't even recognize didn't even notice it and one of my friends comes and sits beside me he was like a friend of a friend he wasn't like one of my best friends and he's like what kind of socks are those and i literally went from super drunk to super sober in three seconds and uh I was like, oh, uh, uh, what are you talking about? And then I got up and I started running down the street. <laughs> and uh, I found an alleyway and I took off the socks and I threw them somewhere in the alley and put my shoes back on and <laughs> found the group of people. And everyone was like, where'd you go? I'm like, oh uh, yeah, I had to puke in the alley or something along those lines. But anyways, uh, those kind of really close calls where things kind of kind of came out, but something actually didn't end up happening was all the ways that I kind of became more and more careful. So I was so good at protecting myself at the same time as realizing over time that there was definitely something. Sorry, I would talk too much with my hands. <laughs> I'm gonna stand like this. And uh, so I realized kind of quickly that um, I had to be really, really careful with protecting myself and not letting this side of me out for the world to see. I realized that it was shameful it was something to be embarrassed about it was exactly the opposite of the image i was trying to portray i was trying to portray this perfect male image i had a six pack i was the guy i was the alpha i went picked up chicks like this and i actually just stood at the bar and the girls walked up to me it was great <laughs> so um that was kind of the way it worked so but i almost felt like i had this dual life um, I had that male alpha six pack douchebag, and then I had the real me. And um, who isn't a douchebag? <laughs> and um, so it was a really, um, it was really difficult living the two lives that were really the same person, but almost entirely separate. Um, a really good example of this was when I was 15 or 16, which is under 18, which is not an adult, my dad, I remember my dad talking to my mom and saying, it was like a Saturday or Sunday, and my dad's like, I'm taking uh, Vic, which was my dead name, to um, out for lunch. And I looked at my dad going like, you are? <laughs> and my mom was like, okay. And uh, so anyways, we get in the car and I lived all the way in the East End and we're driving and we're driving and we're driving. And I'm like, where the hell are we going? And he's like, oh, we're going to a really special place. And I was like, okay, whatever, you know, whatever. We park and we're at a strip club. <laughs> Yay, I'm going to a strip club with my dad at 16 years old. Yeah, um, I don't know how the hell he got me in there, but it was the middle of the day on a Saturday and we get in and he sits me down in the front row of right where the dancers are, like, you know, where the pole is, like, literally the pole is there and I'm standing, like, you know, this far away from the pole. And he's like, order something. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I ordered a hamburger and fries. And then the woman comes out and she starts dancing. And the whole time, he's not looking at the dancer, he's looking at me. And I'm looking at him, I'm looking at my burger and I'm looking at this woman's twat, which is now in my face. And <laughs> You can imagine the incredible level of awkwardness that is existing. I'm trying to eat this hamburger, look at this girl, and knowing that my dad is looking at me. And uh, no, I'm not. after that ordeal, we leave and we get home. And my dad's like, don't tell your mom. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> like, I'm never gonna, never gonna mention this again, except now on YouTube. And um, so, okay, so, we get back and my dad hands me like a stack of pornos, like this this thick. All these like Serbian pornos, really gross. And um, so 
He goes, use these well. <laughs> he hands them to me and I was just like, I guess he thought I was gay. I, he thought something, I don't know what he thought, but I mean, he obviously had some concerns. Maybe I wasn't good enough at hiding that I was different. I mean, look at me now. Like, I don't look like your average, average white cis dude, right? I mean, that's just the way it goes. I'm not. And um, I felt like I did a pretty good job because when I actually ended up telling them that I was trans, they were like, no, you're not. I'm like, I, yeah, I am. <laughs> and then they're like, well, then you should have just, you already made your decision. You already stepped in your bed, whatever the hell the old sayings are. And he said, you've lived 40 years as a man. You have to now just sacrifice the rest of your life. And I'm like, you don't understand. It's not a choice. It's this or death. And uh, over time, I think they've made the realization that um, maybe this wasn't the decision that they would have made, but um, they're okay with me the way I am. I'm going over there for dinner in the next hour <laughs> and um, with the kids. And uh, the relationship is a bit strained, but um, it's still a relationship. So um, it is what it is. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to leave you with a few of those little silly stories and um, kind of tell you what it was like for me when I was growing up. Um, it was definitely a challenge. Uh, it made me stronger in some ways. It also probably slowed my progress down. Had I grown up in a different environment, had I grown up in a different world, maybe if I'd grown up now, I would have realized I was trans 20 years earlier. I don't know. Um, it's really difficult to say. At the same time, I wouldn't change anything because I have my two wonderful kids and I have my wonderful friends and I have a great job and um, it's really nice. So um, for, all of the, for all of the hard times, um, there's also lots of great things as well. Uh, <laughs> It has. It, it was. It was a lot of. It was a lot of craziness when I was growing up. But uh, now I feel like things are really settled, and um, it's been really nice. Anyways, uh, if you like my videos, obviously like and subscribe, and do all that other YouTube -y stuff. And um, I'll post when I think of something to post. <laughs> so um, talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.